Welcome once again. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Interesting ideas. My name is Stan Houston, and we are here to try and help you live a better life. Very simply, how can you and I together learn how to live a better life by having a, a little more unique insight into the way the world works, perhaps uh, have the power to influence a few things in our lives, maybe even have an impact on some good things and produce a, a good income into our life for we, our family, our children, the people we care about. And income, of course, is not just money. That's certainly helpful, certainly useful, and uh, yeah, Life as we know it depends on it. And we're talking about <laughs> what does your life depend on. But it's more than just money. It is the good things that can come into your life, which perhaps makes the money even less important because you find out what is truly important. So yesterday we talked about uh, what does your life depend on and uh, the uh, maybe... And it was confirmed today in another conversation with an entrepreneur is silence, stillness, solitude, listening. If you want to live a good life, sometimes you have to shut up and be alone and be quiet and perhaps uh, seek that still, small voice <laughs> from the God of the universe, who may have something to uh, tell you, talk to you about, perhaps guide you, perhaps to encourage you. And we want to continue a little bit about that today, because someone challenged me, a favorite mentor of mine, who says, you know what, sometimes your life depends on a walk in the wilderness. A walk in the wilderness. Your life may depend on it. Well, what in the world could that mean? Well, we'll find out because the program Interesting Ideas begins right now. Yes, walk in the wilderness. Maybe even more so. Maybe be in exile. Exile. Now, one of my favorite persons, uh, never met him, but we've had a number of nice conversations, and I've read uh, most of his books, uh, Stephen Pressfield. And uh, if you want to do well in life, uh, you'd be, uh, hey, find out a little bit of the wisdom that has come to Stephen Pressfield in a uh, tough and difficult but also very successful life. And from time to time, he tells you that it wasn't always this way. Sometimes it was really worse, and sometimes it was worse than worse. Life was tough. And recently, he's been uh, putting together a series of thoughts on um, wilderness. Now, today, this is what he shared with us. He said... We don't mean the positive, life-enhancing experience of a journey into deep nature, to Alaska or the Antarctic or the wild sea or the Himalayas. We mean wilderness as in lost, alone, as in exposed and vulnerable to wild creatures and storms and floods and cold that will kill you. We mean far from home and family, and in serious peril. We mean exile. In my own wilderness years, I had no communication with my family, with my wife, my brother, my parents, with anyone. I was too ashamed of myself to write or call or reach out, and if others reached out to me, I ducked them. That's exile. The feeling of wilderness years is the feeling of being outcast. We are the black sheep. We are the bastard. We are the prodigal daughter or son. In wilderness years, we're a stranger in a strange land. Remember the Doors song? People are strange when you're a stranger. 
Faces look ugly when you're alone. Women seem wicked when you're unwanted. Streets are uneven and when you're downed. <sighs> yeah, a wilderness experience. Now, right now, as Stephen found out when he posted that column this morning already, the comments are flooding in as people are talking about their own wilderness experience, about their own exile. The word exile, first of all, it is actually a word that is rooted uh, in the Hebrew scriptures, which uh, Stephen spends some time in. And it's when the uh, children of Israel were captured by the Babylonians. Their entire culture was destroyed. But what the Babylonians did is they took the kind of cream of the crop of the culture and they took them all back to Babylon. And uh, they were captives in exile. They were away from home. All the things that they had loved and lived for and their entire culture, they were enslaved in exile. And the, the term off exile sometimes means to actually put people away. Now, I guess we cancel them today, but... In exile, you just didn't cancel them. You actually put them someplace else. And for many years, that's the way the people in Russia, the rulers, first the czars, and then the communists did the same thing, is rather than just killing somebody, they did enough of that, but they would exile them to Siberia. So uh, the troublemaker, the dissident, uh, the outcast would be sent to a small village way up in, way out in the middle of nowhere in Siberia, and they are in exile, and they have to live a life away from all that gives them life. Could it be that one of the ways for your life to become all it can be to live the life you want. You know, remember, it's uh, not only uh, does your life depend on it, but more than that, what about the life you want? What does that depend on? And could it be that something called the wilderness is something we have to spend some time in? Perhaps uh, it's vital that we uh, live a little bit in a state of exile. Now, I've been there. Not in massive, long-term ways, but there are times and there are places, and um, I've gone through them where I just kind of felt, well, you know, no one cares, no one pays attention, uh, the customers aren't there. My entrepreneurial life has oftentimes led me to moments uh, of great ecstasy but also to some moments of just deep despair. I'm all alone. No one cares. What's going to happen to me? Uh, a real pathos. And uh, the word pathos can mean pathetic. It means, in effect, uh, you just are feeling, feeling very, very deeply, and uh, some of those feelings are not very good. You know? Could it be... Now, what Stephen goes on to say is that be careful. Right now, <laughs> in certainly his encore years, certainly in his more senior years, things are going pretty well. But his point is that perhaps for that to have happened, it was the wilderness and going through the wilderness and living in exile that helped to make it happen. Richard Rohr, again, one of the mentors I've never met, a uh, Franciscan priest who has a huge following around the world of people who want to take life seriously by taking things of the Spirit seriously, has made a comment. He said that everybody talks about a transformation. In fact, I got another email today from a guy who is teaching, and this is probably true, that uh, you really have to have a product or a service that transforms people. It, it helps change them. Well, 
that can be true, but sometimes I just need for the, the toilet to work <laughs> or I need for the car to be fixed. Uh, nothing transformational about that. In fact, the, the people who do many of those things can make a very, very good living because uh, it's not something I aspire to and pay people for. It's something I just need to have done. And I really come to appreciate those need to have done people. I think of the life I have, and part of it is because there are just so many things that I don't have to do that other people do for me. Stock the shelves in the grocery store, you know, fix the automobile, uh, paint the wall, all kinds of just transactional people that give me the freedom to do a few things that might be transformational. So here's what Richard said. He said, hey, transformation can only really happen when you have a deep, deep love and you go through a deep, deep suffering. If you truly want to be changed and become authentic, it probably will take a deep, deep love and a deep, deep pain, suffering. Now, what do you think of that? I'm Stan Houston. Just an interesting idea. We're at uh, 12 minutes. We have just a few minutes more, and we'll be right back. Well, what does your life depend on? Well, just the physical being, that's part of it. Good health. I celebrate. Yesterday I found out uh, that wonderful word that all cancer survivors, uh, the tests were taken, and I got those four wonderful words. See you next year. Everything looks good. I am blessed. I'm incredibly grateful. I should be dead, <laughs> but I'm not. <laughs> and it looks like I've got a few more years ahead of me, and hopefully I'll make the best of them. So those kinds of things that our life depends on certainly attend to. Again, the guy who said yesterday, sleep, your life depends on it. Robert Roy Britt, and he's following it up with a book, your life depends on learning how to sleep well. That's vital. I'm going to ask you, what are some of the other things, and I suggested that we are spiritual beings, not just human beings, what are some of the things of the emotion, of the spirit, of creativity, of relationships, of connectedness? What else does the life you want in 23 depend on? What are some of the things you're willing to suffer for so that perhaps you can be uh, more fully you? Remember the uh, woman who told me, <laughs> we asked, well, what do you want to have happen as a result of this workshop? And she said, I don't want to change. I just want to be really good at being me. I want to be really good at being me. Well, you know, maybe that's what God wants you to be. <laughs> God doesn't want you to change, changing your sex, changing everything else that people think are going to change them and make them happy. That doesn't work. Certainly a change of heart, mind, and spirit, but there's something you've been designed to be. Maybe you need to put away the false characterizations and the false self and the false roles you've been playing and find out uh, who you really were meant to be. 
and what you were really meant to do. And in 23, be one of the 3% of the population who actually do that. Be really good at being you. If I can help, I'll be glad to try. That's what I do. I do it fairly well. So reach out to me, stanhousted at gmail.com, stanhousted at gmail.com, and uh, tell me how perhaps I can help you. Also, you need to be on the radio. You need to self-express yourself. You need to have the courage to speak your truth. And we can help you do it and help you do it well. God gave you an audience that is waiting to hear the word and the advice and the counsel from you. God gave you an audience. Find out who they are and how you can reach them. We can help you do that. That's what we do. And we do that very well. Reach out to me, stanhousted at gmail.com, stanhousted at gmail.com, witradio.net. That's the web stage where you can kind of uh, read my stuff and see the show, and uh, we can go from there. All the best and blessings to you, because what your life really needs is for people to bless you all the time. So seek blessings, and one of the best ways to do that is to give them to others. An exchange of blessings, guess what? Your life depends on it. All the best. Bye for now.